This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1473. Four Myths About Mobility Training by Kate Galliott of fitforreallife.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Happy Monday and a happy Labor Day for those of us in the US and welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web. Kind of like an ongoing audiobook, but always with a bit of my commentary at the end. Now, we have a bunch of shows covering a bunch of different topics. Check them all out by searching for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. Now, today's article is titled Four Myths About Mobility Training, but the author ended up covering the other two separately. So just a heads up that we're only gonna talk about two of the four myths about mobility training today. So with that, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Four Myths About Mobility Training by Kate Galliott of fitforreallife.com If you wanted to learn to speak French, you wouldn't take lessons in mathematics to accomplish it. The fastest way to learn a language is to start practicing speaking that language. How you improve your flexibility, range of motion, and mobility are no different. And yet, you might still be doing things to improve your mobility that aren't actually creating the changes you're seeking. In this article, you'll learn why some of the common methods people use to increase their mobility aren't actually working to do so. How to improve your mobility. Will foam rollers improve my mobility? Foam rollers and massage devices are myth number one about mobility training. A driving factor for your mobility is your nervous system. Your brain, spinal cord, and nerves are deciding how, quote-unquote, safe it is for you to go into a range of motion. If they don't deem it safe, you won't enter that range. Your nervous system is figuring out if it's safe by paying attention to a variety of factors it's receiving from your internal and external environments. Your nervous system learns it's safe when you have shown your nervous system that you can control the position you're trying to get into. To do this, you must include movement near your end ranges of your current mobility. Passive inputs like a foam roller do not do this. You can see this process of teaching the nervous system that it is safe to enter into new ranges of motion when you watch someone rehab from a major injury or accident. At some point in the rehab, the therapist starts asking the patient to actively participate in learning to flex, extend, and rotate their joint instead of the therapist doing all of the work to move their limb for them. You don't have to have been in a major accident to have the same science apply to you. Regaining lost tissue function, range, control, or strength requires your active participation. But what about when a therapist uses massage as part of their treatment plan? When a well-trained manual therapist applies pressure into your tissues, they are applying intentional force into a specific layer of tissue. And if they are really an excellent therapist, they'll follow that treatment up with some kind of movement activity to incorporate your nervous system so that it learns more about how to use the tissues they just treated. A foam roller just won't do that. What stretches will make me more flexible? Passive stretching is myth number two about mobility training. The common belief is that you use stretching to quote-unquote loosen up the tissue that is tight, aberrant, or knotted up. But there is a significant problem with seeing your tissues as things that are tight or that need loosening, releasing, or unknotting. Your body is always keeping track of how tight or loose your tissues are. And each tissue is at its current length-tension relationship for a reason. Here are three common reasons for tight-feeling muscles. One, joints must have adequate mobility and stability in order to operate effectively. Too much mobility can become an area of opportunity. So can too much stability, vice versa as well. When you don't have enough of what you need, your body will accommodate by using other joints and tissues to make up for what's lacking at the joint in question. If your nervous system knows you don't have stability at a joint where there should be stability, It will create stability using other tissues in your body, even if that means 
making one bit of soft tissue extra tight feeling to do so. Two, when you don't move your joints and their associated tissues through their full range of motion regularly, you stop having full access to the function of those joints and tissues. Think of a big dinner plate and a button on a shirt. Your joints could move through a range of motion with a circumference comparable to the dinner plate, or they can move through a range with a circumference of the button. The deciding factor is how much you currently move your joints through their ranges of motion. Dinner plate now, dinner plate later. Button now, button later. And three, high sympathetic drive can also influence how tight you feel in your muscles. Sympathetic drive refers to your nervous system's two branches, which are called the sympathetic or fight or flight and the parasympathetic or rest and digest. When you're chronically ramped into the sympathetic nervous system, one of the trickle-down effects is your muscles will hold more tension. And so you stretch to try to release that tight feeling, but you're always stretching that same tissue and it's always feeling tight again. Passive stretching is not teaching your nervous system and tissues anything about how to control a different length or tension. And without that, they're not likely to make long-term change towards greater mobility. Foam rolling and passive stretching might be a pleasurable thing for you. This article is not to dissuade you from doing something pleasurable, but rather is to help you get a better sense of how things work. There's nothing I like less than spending time on things that aren't very productive. And if you can learn to do more productive things during your mobility time, you'll get more out of that time and you'll make more progress. You just listened to the post titled Four Myths About Mobility Training by Kate Galliott of fitforreallife.com. Do you get stressed out when planning a vacation? I've definitely needed some extra help choosing the perfect spot for my next family getaway. And that's why Apple Vacations is so great. They're known as America's favorite vacation company for good reason. Apple Vacations will help you plan your entire getaway with confidence from start to finish. We're talking personalized service, exceptional values, and so much more. Plus, you can choose the most gorgeous destinations like Mexico, the Caribbean, Central America, Hawaii, and the continental US. Each all-inclusive Apple Vacations package includes round-trip airfare, hotel accommodations, meals, drinks, entertainment, and tips. Non-stop transfers are also included at no additional cost at select hotels, so the entire vacation is as seamless as possible. For a limited time, you can use promo code SAND75 and take $75 off your stay at Live Aqua in Cancun or Punta Cana. Just go to applevacations.com slash optimal dash health dash daily to get this steal of a deal to your favorite Live Aqua Resort today. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Look, I struggle finding the time to focus on my mobility work. I've said this many times before. Stretching isn't the most comfortable feeling. In fact, it's supposed to feel uncomfortable. And after a hard workout where I've spent the last 20, 30, or 45 minutes making myself feel uncomfortable already, it's tough to find the motivation to spend another 10 or 15 minutes making myself feel uncomfortable by working on my mobility. But here's the thing. In order to progress, we have to make ourselves feel uncomfortable. This applies actually to most things in life. Think about the last time you learned a new skill. There were times, especially in the beginning, when it felt uncomfortable. Everything was new, and there was probably a lot of frustration on your part, which is a type of discomfort. But you fought through this initial discomfort because you knew it was worth it. As you continue to improve your skills, a little bit of discomfort comes with the territory. That discomfort lets you know you're doing something different, and that's a good thing. But again, in other areas of life, you know that this initial discomfort is worth the growth you're going to experience. All of this to say that we need to treat mobility work in this same way, just like any other life skill that's worth putting the effort into. And so when it comes to mobility training, when you stretch, it should be active. You need to push yourself to the point of slight discomfort over and over again. 
that's how you know you're gonna increase your range of motion. And again, I understand that after a hard workout, spending time to make yourself feel more uncomfortable is not the ideal, but it's so worth it. All right, that'll do it for the Monday episode. I hope you have a great start to your week. I hope you're enjoying your Labor Day if you're in the U.S., and I'll be back here tomorrow, as usual, where your optimal life awaits.